Lesson 3, Dividends. Before we proceed to answering some of the problems that I prepared, let us have an overview of dividends in general. So I guess in the previous problems or in the previous videos, specifically on the lesson about share capital, we encountered this um, account called retained earnings. So in this particular topic, dividends, we are going to dwell deeper or not the deepest of the deepest about retained earnings, but somehow this is going to be the most common account that we are going to encounter along the way. So retained earnings, unsa Danish siya ma'am? Retained earnings, I guess I also mentioned this, that this is the pool of the profits that the corporation has gained throughout the years. So the income summary is closed in is close to retained earnings. So compared to the sole proprietorship, Income summary is close to the capital account of the sole proprietor. For example, Amora Capital. Or in the partnership, again, it is close to the capital of the partners composing the, composing the partnership. But in a corporate setting, the income summary is not close to the individual accounts of the shareholders comprising the corporation. But instead, it is close to, a, to this account named retained earnings. Again, this is the pool of the profits that the corporation has gained throughout the years. But this doesn't mean nga the whole retained earnings is subject to distribution as dividends. So just because you have 1 million retained earnings, that doesn't mean that the whole 1 million is subject to distribution sa shareholders. Because the board of directors or the management would um, somehow or sometimes... Um, restrict a part of the retained earnings for specific purposes. For example, the corporation is planning for plant expansion. Okay, so expansion of the business. And we need to, um, we need to retain a certain amount. Let's say 50% of the profits should be retained para ma-accomplish or para ma-realize ang katong plant expansion. Okay, so if that's the case, if that amount is restricted, from the term itself, restricted, so naka-set aside na siya for a specific purpose, then that restricted amount, restricted amount cannot be distributed as dividends. The same goes with treasury stock. Some, um, I, I believe na ato po ding na-encounter sa una, di ba nga, what if ma'am, walay enough retained earnings para mo absorb sa loss sa treasury stock transaction. I also mentioned that before we um, we could enter into a treasury stock transaction, it is required that we have enough retained earnings. So again, we should set aside a certain part of the retained earnings to cover the treasury stock. Just in case nga, um, dili na nato ma-resell ang treasury stock na ay retained earnings nga kaya mo absorb sa loss. So that restricted part, again, cannot be distributed as dividends. But, ma'am, what is this dividends? Dividends is actually the form of return of investment to the shareholders. It's like you are depositing your money in the bank and then later on, nakadawat kag interest because of the money that you deposited. So, that form of interest is interest income on your part that is the return the return of in of depositing a certain amount of money the same goes with dividends it's like you are depositing your money in the corporation for the corporation's use and in exchange of that um an exchange of that investment they will give you something in return for your benefit benefit and that is in the form of dividends so moto sa ang balik kumbaga sa imuhang giinvest but just because nakuha na nimo ang dividends, that doesn't mean nga dili na ka shareholder. So as long as you are a shareholder and every time that the company would declare dividends, you would be entitled to receive dividends. Okay? So dividends does not always um, form, uh, is not always in the form of cash. Sometimes it could be in property and sometimes it could also be shares. Okay? You own shares and then um, the company would give you another another number of shares depending on the rate or the percentage of your ownership. Let's say you are 20%, uh, you own 20% of the partnership, I mean the corporation, and then they will also give you a certain amount of shares equal to that 20%. Okay, so nadungagan lang imuhang shares. Again, when we say, 
dividends it um it's not always cash there are other forms of dividends now um in distributing dividends we have three dates to be considered first the date of declaration that's the time when the board would announce na merong dividends so take note ha hindi hindi siya always hindi siya like Every year, may matatanggap na dividends, hindi. You are only entitled to receive dividends when the board would declare so. Okay? So, maghulat ang declaration sa board. And then, we also have this date of record. So, that's the time na kung kinsa tong mga naka-own og dividends or kinsa tong mga nakapal, I mean, naka-own og dividends, naka-own og shares or kinsa tong mga nakapalit og shares, sila lang ang pwedeng mo dawat sa dividend. So, that's the time na tiglista na sa mga pangalan sa mga nakapalit o shares. Pangalan sa mga shareholders as of that date. That's date of record. And lastly, date of payment. So, muna na siya ang time na i-distribute na. Ma'am, dili day, pwede nga sa isa lang naka-adlaw tanan. It's a corporate setting. So, larger transactions, larger numbers are involved. So, most of the time, these three dates does not fit into one day only. Okay? So, na mga gap in between. Now, why is it important for us to know these three dates? It's because we only record or we only journalize um, it uh, the only day or date na mag-prepare to journal entries, the date of declaration. So, according to the accounting standards, that's when the obligation of the corporation arises. The moment na nag-declare sila, nana na sila'y oblig obligasyon nga mutunong or um, buhaton ang kanang ilahang gideclare nga dividends. So, again, we only prepare journal entry on the date of declaration. Date of record and date of payment. And um, also, we, we also prepare... Um, journal entry on the date of payment. Okay? Only on the date of record, hindi tayo nagpe-prepare ng entry. Hindi <laughs> natin pwedeng i-debit ang pangalan ng shareholders na makakatanggap ng dividends. So, that is a non-recordable event. Okay, so um, that's just um, an introduction of what we should know, what we should learn about dividends before we dwell into this first problem. So, we have Marasigan Corporation and in this problem, we are required to prepare journal entries for the events or um, equity transactions that happened during 2019. And first, we have there sold 3,000 shares of stock or shares of the treasury for 20 pesos. So, if you could, if you would look at the um, she section as of the beginning of the year, we have tre treasury stock outstanding of 320,000. And that is 10,000 shares. So basically, if you're going to divide that, that's 32 pesos per share, right? So we bought shares at um for 32 pesos, pero ato siyang gibaligya for 20. A simple analysis would will tell us that we realized a loss. And then our entry would be cash, of course, because we received something in return. And that is 3,000 shares times 20 per share. And that is, okay, 60,000. And in exchange, we credit treasury shares. And that's 3,000 times the 32 pesos na cost, okay? Again, treasury shares are recorded at cost and not at par. 3,000 times 32. So, if you could notice 96 and 60, and there is a difference of 36. Alright, 36. That's a loss. Again, 32 atong palit. Gibaligya lang natong 20. The loss is again, in the order of priority, the first to absorb is the share premium treasury shares. If wala tayong share premium treasury shares, the next one that will absorb the loss would be retained earnings. And in this problem, wala tayong share premium treasury shares. Therefore, the loss will be absorbed by the retained earnings. So that would be our first transaction. Next. Declared and distributed as property dividend, the investments in equity securities held by Marasigan to ordinary shares. Okay, ibig sabihin si Marasigan Corporation nag-invest din sa ibang korporasyon. Okay, and yan, that investment of Marasigan to other corporation 
yan ang dineclare niya as dividends. Okay? Again, Marasigan is a shareholder of another corporation. And yung shares niya doon, yun yung ibibigay niya sa sarili niyang shareholders. Ma'am, question, isn't it share dividend? Okay. Share dividend is the distribution of the company's own shares. In this particular topic, I mean letter B, hindi niya sariling shares. Shares yun ng ibang korporasyon kung saan siya naging shareholder. So that share, we call it investment in equity securities, is a, an asset of Marasigan. And when Marasigan would um, declare an asset aside from cash, we call it property dividends or dividend in kind. So this is again a property dividend. And it has a carrying value of 400, fair market of 750 on the date of declaration, 760 on the date of record, 756 on the date of distribution. So, um, our only concern here, as of the moment, on the date of declaration, is the fair market value as of that day. Okay, and we have here 750,000 fair market value on the date of declaration. So again, our focus as of the moment is the fair market value on the day of declaration. So um, this is the um, distribution of dividends. And ang kailangan na tukuhaan is the retained earnings. Okay, kasi nag-declare nag na tayo ng dividends. And we call it property. Ano ba yan? property dividends payable again at fair market value which is 750,000 now on the date of record sabi niya 760 na ang naging fair market value but again hindi tayo gagawa ng journal entry on the date of record so let us proceed to the date of distribution or the date of payment date of payment this time since magbabayad na tayo we just have to eliminate our payable. Okay? So, sabi ko di ba kanina, on the day of declaration, that's the time when the obligation arises. And so, we acknowledge a payable account. Then, naging 756. Okay. 756. Pero, yung payable natin, nakastick siya sa... 750, hindi tayo pwedeng magsabi ng 756 kasi yan lang naman ang iko-close. So, 750. Now, the question is, ano magiging credit? Dividends payable. So, ibig sabihin, nag-promise tayo na ibibigay natin sa shareholders yung investment natin dun sa ibang corporation. And so, we credit investment in equity securities. Aalisin na natin yan sa books natin because ibibigay na natin sa shareholders, right? So, that's investment in equity securities at carrying amount. Ito lang yung nandun sa books natin. So, hindi natin pwedeng galawin ang um, 400,000 on the date of declaration kasi yun na yung nakafix dun sa books natin, sa accounting record. So, alisin si 400 and then we have 350, right? Okay. 350. But wait, ma'am, unsay pulos aning 756. Accounting standard says that on the date of payment, pag dili gani equal ang fair market value on the date of declaration and on the date of payment, we have to adjust. Kailangan naka fair market value gyud siya. So, I'm so sorry kung nag-jump na tayo dito, but let's analyze again. 750 ang nasa record. But on the date of distribution, 756. That means we need to increase our liability. And in exchange, we are going to um, decrease our retained earnings again for the kulang na 6,000. So property dividends payable. Ato sa siyang i-adjust para mo fit siya sa fair market value which is 7. 156, okay? And then, that's the time na magbayad na ta. Ang atong utang, as of the moment, is 750 plus 6 kasi nag-increase. So, 756,000. Therefore, 
yan as is yan carrying amount. Therefore, the excess is 400,000. That excess, we consider it as gain on distribution, gain on distribution of property dividends. Okay? Date on distribution. Gain. Okay. We have 400, tapos ni Saka og 756. So, 400 lang atong gasto pag invest na to dito sa Picas Corporation, pero katong naghatag na ta og dividends, it's as if mas mahal atong gihatag na dividends sa atong shareholders because that's 756. So, the 356 is again, it means katong investment na to nga 400, ni mahal di ay siya pag abot karong panahon na. Ning saka siya 356. So, that's again on our part. And then, eventually, ato ra pong gihatag sa ato ang shareholders. Next, letter C. Declared a 5% ordinary share dividend. Market value was 40. Okay. So, nag-declare nag ng 5%. So, we debit again. Kung asa nato ginakuha ang ato ang pangbayad sa dividends, that's retained earnings in the amount of, wala siyang sinabing amount pero may sinabi siyang market value. Okay, so here's the key. Pag ang imuhang gideclare nga dividends is 20% or less, okay, 20% or less, we call it small share dividend. And if it's a small share dividend, we record it at fair market value or at market value. Nga di ay ma'am kung dili 20% or less. Okay, if it is more than 20%, we record it at par. Okay? And in this case, that is a small share dividend. So, we are going to record it at 40%. So, as of the moment, pila ang atuang ordinary shares? Ma'am, unsa ma'am, issued or outstanding? Okay. Di ba mag-distribute tag dividends sa shareholders? Now, question. Kung di to ata mag-base sa issued, pero naatay treasury shares na 10,000, apil di ba ni sa issued? Ay, no, bawasan na siya 3, so 7,000. Kinsay mo dawat sa 7,000 nga dividends? I mean, kinsay mo dawat sa dividends based on the 7,000 shares? The corporation? Kasi si corporation ang may hawak ng 7,000 if we are going to base it in our issued shares. Basically, hindi yun pwede. Si corporation nagbayad, si corporation din ang, ang, ang magre-receive. Therefore, when we declare share dividends, it is based on the shares outstanding. Pasabot, kadtong naa sa kamot sa mga shareholders. Remember the definition of outstanding shares? The number of shares that are in the hands of the shareholders. Kasi basically, kailangan na ay mudawat. So, kadtong outstanding. And in this case, we have outstanding shares. Bakit 40,000 shares issued and outstanding? Issued. We have 40,000 shares issued, but 10,000 ang outstanding. Ay, si Mr. Balyada mali. Charot. 40,000 times 50, sakto, 2 million, pero hindi niya dapat sabihing and outstanding. Okay? Ang outstanding lang diri ah, is 30,000 at the beginning of the year. Pero na distribute naman o balik ang um, 3,000. 3, Therefore, our outstanding shares our out ay, sorry. Preference yung tinitingnan ko. Dito pala tayo. 300,000 shares. Medyo saba sa mong dapit. 300,000 shares issued. Minus 10. So, we have 290 lang. Pero nabaligya naman ang 3. So, we have 293,000 shares outstanding. Okay? So, retained earnings. Shares. Market value. Shares distributable, that is 293,000 shares times, pila tong yung par value, times 1 peso, kasi at par tayo, times 5%. Okay. Our retained earnings will be, 
293,000 shares times 5%, but this time 40 pesos, okay? 293 times 0 0.05 times 40. So we have 586,000 na dividends distributable. I mean, retained earnings. And then we have shares distributable of 293,000 times 0 0.05. So we have here 14,650 shares distributable are at par. Okay? Mauni ang atuang payable. And then the excess will go to share. Ah, let me check. Shares distributable. And then... The excess, kung makita na ito, murag dako dako yun, no? From 40 pesos, naging, um, from 1 peso, naging 40 pesos ang iyahang shares. Ang iyahang market value. So, we could say that the company is really doing good. Okay. So, murag medyo mali ni. Ako ang 5% times 40 and then share premium will be on the excess so that's 571 350 now after that magbayad ta we are going to distribute the shares so that's shares distributable and then credit ordinary shares kay ato namang ihatag sa ilaha so this is on the date of payment and that would only be this one Kanilang man at wang i-close. So, that's 14,560. Okay? Now, letter D. Declared and paid the annual cash dividends to preference shareholders. So, we already had an overview of this. When we say cash dividends to preference shareholders, we simply multiply the par value, the paid-in capital on par value sa preference shares times the rate, 6%. Okay, so we have here, again, retained earnings. Ma'am, wala na small share and large share dividend kay preference shares? Wala na po. Kung pila yun na ang rate, maura yun na. Okay, so that's 2 million. 2 million pesos. Wala man tay another transaction niya, no? So 2 million times the 6% rate. And then, we declared cash. Cash dividends naman pala to eh. Cash dividends payable. And then, later on, later on, we just have to eradicate that one. Then, credit cash. Pwede na nga credit diretsyo nga cash, no? Okay, so how much? That's 2 million times 0 0.06, so that's 120,000. And then eventually, ato ura po dayo na siya nga i, um, atong i-debit the moment na magbayad ta. Okay, so yan lang naman ang requirement niya, but I want us to prepare this shareholders equity section. Mama gina tong ginabuhat, di ba? Nagaprepare ginta ani. So that we would know how much is the shareholders equity of the company at the end of the period. So preference shares ganun pa rin wala namang nagbago. That's 2 million still. Wala tayong nabenta. The ordinary shares, however, nag-change. Pila na ganito ato ang shares issued and outstanding. That's 293, no? 293 and then this ganun pa rin 40,000 okay 293 the, therefore that's 293 but wait nang hatag di ba tag shares usab okay balikan na to we have 300,000 shares issued and then which part as to the pit? It was here. Nadunga gan, og 14,560 pesos. Pila na, ma'am. Sige, tanawon daw na to. That's basically the 293,000 times 5%. Okay, nadunga gan, og 5% ang 
issued shares. So, 293,000 shares times 0.05, ayun, 14,650 shares. Pero ma'am, nga nung 14, alang atag peso raman, so times 1, the same. Okay? Again, nadungagan ang ato ang issued shares by 5%, kay nag-declare tag 5%. Sige. Dili malibog kad tong at market value ug at par ha nga small and large ang small share dividends and large share dividends ato lang tong kinahanglan pag mag pag magdetermine ta pila ang amount nga i-debit sa retained earnings pag small at par i mean at market value pag large at par but this remains the same kung pila ang imuhang in number of shares nga i-distribute times the par. So, shares distributable ang ihang nature, mura pag ordinary shares, at par always. Now, pila ka shares ang na-issue, you have remained, you have, um, you have, you currently have outstanding na 293. Nag-declare tag 5%, therefore, 5% ana na atong gi-distribute. Let's say, I am a shareholder. I am holding 100 shares 100 lang kabuok now the the, the corporation declares 5% share, share dividend regardless if that's if that's small or large pag magdeclare nag 5% pasabot madungagan ako ang 100 o 5% and what is 5% of 100 basically 5 therefore ako ang shares mahimo ng 105 kabuok Okay? What if what if 25%? percent idi mahimong 125% kabuok. Okay? When we talk about the number of shares, we don't care if it's large or small. Again, diri lang to magmatter ang large or small. So, as of the end of the year, we have 293 shares plus na dungagan og 14,560. It just happens nga ang amount the same. Number of shares 14,560 and the amount is 14,560. Basically because tag piso lang ang par. So times 1, the same ang amount. Ayog ka, um, ayog ka mislead. Okay? Don't be misled by the by the figures. So, asa na tagani? 300,000 shares issued and then nadungagan og 14,560 so that's gonna be 314,560 and then nadungagan ay okay sakto lagi issued and outstanding so if that's the case we have 314,560 times piso Wag na, wag, wag na nating i-multiply ng 1. Okay, and then our share premium ordinary, the same pa, pa rin, 300, I mean, 4.7, 4.7. And then our retained earnings, kani, kanig yun ang napektuhan kaayo. We have 35,200,000 thousand minus, pang minus na to ni kang atong gidebit, kani. And then, minus kani, minus ani. Asa pa ba? Kani. So, if you could remember what I told you kanina, retained earnings yun ang medyo magamit kaayo. Pag-abot diri asa, dividends. Kaya siya ang tig-absorb. Now, treasury stock, ordinary shares. How many number, how many shares ang nabilin? 10,000 minus 3, kaya atong nabaligya. 7,000 at cost. Pila to yung cost? 32 pesos. So, 7,000 times, 30, times 32. But this is contra equity. So, minus. Therefore, our total she at the end of the year is 40,492,560. Wala ba siya income? Okay, hindi niya naman sinabi na may income on the... Um, during the year, but if my income, i-add to siya sa retained earnings. So, for presentation sake, nagbuhat ang shareholders equity section. Pero I believe na pa na income, wala lang niya na, na supply. Okay, so that would be problem number 8. Our next problem is problem number 25 and this talks about again, shareholders equity section but this time, what's new about this problem? Kaning split. Okay, share split. Now, let's go to the requirement. Journal entries to record the transactions and then shareholders' equity. So, 
to give you a breather, okay, we are going to talk about this problem on our next video.